Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to go through exercise 1.11 from the Art of Electronics. Uh, in this exercise, um, we're mainly discussing power transfer. Um, so we'll be looking at a Thevenin circuit. Um, this, this exercise is mats heavy, so strap in and let's get going. So exercise 1.11 tells you to show that the maximum power dissipation occurs when our load, so the load resistance, is equal to the source resistance. So we can um, try and draw the circuit out. So let's say we have a um, so we can try and draw this out. So let's say we have a voltage source. Um, the values at the moment don't matter. Uh, we have some source resistance that's kind of part of the voltage source. And then we have a load resistor. This could be anything like a light or something. It, it doesn't really matter, but the values don't matter at the moment. So what we're trying to show is that when RS and RL equal, R, RS and RL are equal, we get the ma maximum power inside resistor RL. So if you try to imagine what would happen in two different scenarios, let's say. So let's say our RL is close, very close to zero. That means that we will probably we will have maximum current going through this circuit, as the total resistance of the circuit will be dominated by RS. So and the voltage will mostly drop across RS because that will be proportionally the largest resistor. So we have the largest current. However, the voltage drop across RL will be very small. So we won't get much power dissipation across that resistor as uh, power is equals, equal to voltage times current. Now, if you imagine uh, scenario number two, where RL is very large, so let's say um, 100 kilo ohms, something like that, um, compared to a source resistance of let's say 50 ohms, that means um, the total resistance of the circuit is dominated by RL. So um the the current the total current flowing through the circuit is mainly dependent on rl so it will also it will be very low as rl is a large value now you can imagine um the voltage drop in this scenario if you use the potential divider equation most of the voltage will be dropped across rl however the current flowing through the circuit will be very low so in that scenario you still wouldn't get a lot of power dissipation so what we need to do is basically try and find the point where we get maximum power dissipation across RL, which is given to us by the question. So let's first of all start with Ohm's law, which tells us V equals IR. And then let's put in the other equation, which is P equals VI, which gives you the power dissipation across any component, uh, if you know its voltage and current. Um, so if we substitute um, 1, so equation 1, into equation 2, so we replace this V with IR, we get I squared RL. So I'm doing it for this resistor here. So we can see the power dissipation is equal to the current squared through the resistor times the value of the resistance itself. Now, we, we can calculate the current flowing through this circuit using Ohm's law. So that basically using this equation here, V equals IR, and rearranging it so that we get I by itself. So we move the R over to the other side, so it's V divided by R. And R in this case is equal to RS plus RL, because the, uh, the current will be dependent on the total resistance of the circuit. So now if we substitute number 4, so equation number four into equation number three. So just the I, remember we have to keep this squared outside. Uh, we get the following equation. So uh, we have moved all of this into I. So we get V squared divided by RS, RL, all squared, times by RL, which we have over here. 
Now to find um, the maximum power dissipation, we have to take the derivative of, of, of this equation here. So um, I'll show you in small um, steps as possible. So to make this clear, it is maths heavy, um, but it is something you gotta know really. So again, I've put the equation back down here. So our power dissipation across the load resistor is equal to the voltage squared divided by RS plus RL all squared times by RL. So we take the derivative and set it to equal to zero. Um, now, when we take the derivative, there's a important rule that we uh, we can use here to make our life a little bit easier. It's called the quotient rule. And that basically tells us um, that the derivative of a function like this, where you have one divided by the other, um, you can use this where your G is the bottom value and your F is the top value. So we have G times the derivative of F minus F times the derivative of G divided by G squared. So let's note down what each of these um, G and F values are. So we can see G is equal to RS plus RL, which is given to us here, uh, looking at this equation here, and that squared, which is also there. Um, if we take a derivative of uh, G uh, with respect to RL, we get um, two RS plus RL in brackets. So the two is moved in front of it and then we remove one power from the top. So that ends up with one. Um, if you look at F in this case, it's V squared times RL. Now, if we take the derivative of F, which is needed for this section here, it's equal to VF as RL um, doesn't have any power. So it's, it goes to one. Now, what I will do is place all of these equations into this function here. And we get the following. So you can see that G is here from RS plus RL squared. Then we've got V squared from our F uh, derivative of F, then minus V squared RL, which is FX, which is this one here, uh, times by two RS, two times RS plus RL, which is our derivative of G. And that is divided by uh, the value of G, which is RS plus RL squared. And we have to also square that value. So it's squared squared and you have to do it twice. Um, you can simplify that to uh, the whole equation to this basically. So what we've done here is we've kind of moved V squared out as it was present on both of these. Um, so outside the brackets and then I've basically simplified the two to the power of two. Uh, just to say 4 here. So that makes it a little bit easier to read. Um, now if we divide both sides by V squared, so this side and this side by V squared, uh, we've got the following equation. So 0 divided by V squared is still 0, so nothing changes there. And basically the V squared from this side disappears. Um, next, if we multiply both sides by RS plus RL to the power of 4, so this equation here, so 0 multiplied by anything is equal to 0, so nothing changes on this side. However, um, we get rid of the bottom part of the equation here. So that makes this a lot simpler now. Now we expand out all the brackets that we see here, and we get the following equations. So now we can see that um, we can remove this is equal or the opposite of this so we can get rid of 2 rs rl with this and then we got 1 rl squared and we got minus 2 rl squared here so that goes to just 1 uh, minus 1 rl squared and we've got rs squared here so the equation simplifies to rs squared minus rl squared and if you rearrange that we get to the equation that the question is asking for which is RS is equal to RL. Um, hopefully that was clear and I've tried to break it down into small steps. Um, but to kind of, because this is maths heavy and I think a, a graphical representation is probably very good to look at. So I've also set up an Excel to show you the equation that we derived in the first part of the question. So this equation here, where we found out the power dissipation across 
RL is equal to this equation here. So what I've done here is I've put down values of RL from 1 to 500. And then I've put down this equation in column B. And column B references um, cells E1 and E2, which is the voltage. So you can see uh, I've put down 10 volts just as a random number. And I've put down source resistance of 50 ohms as that's a very common number you'll see in electronic engineering. So you can see I've got um, E1 squared, which is voltage squared as given in the equation. And then I've got the load resistance plus the source resistance squared times by the load resistance. Now, um, basically I've dragged the equation down where I'm changing the load resistance from one to 500. And then I've plotted this, uh, um, plotted the power dissipation against the load resistance. So what we were trying to show in this equation over here was that when RS is equal to RL, we get the maximum power dissipation. And that also means the gradient was also zero there. So you can see the gradient is zero there. So I've got 50 ohms source resistance. So we can see over here around the 50 mark, we get the maximum peak of power dissipation on the load resistance. Now we can change this value so that let's say our source resistance is equal to uh, 100 ohms, then that peak will change to 100 ohms. So hopefully this shows you in a clearer representation that maximum power dissipation um, occurs when you have RS equal to RL, so that your load resistance is equal to your source resistance. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to help you.